G'day. Welcome to Crystal Clear Mathematics, where it is easier than you think. I'm Graham Henderson, and we're here today to continue our, continue our quest in understanding how to factorise quadratic expressions. Now, I have one here that's moderately difficult to factorise. In my last video, I showed you how the cross method works. In this video, I'm going to show you what's often called the PS method for product and sum. And this underlies, in fact, most of what we do in factorising quadratics. I'm going to show you my own little twist on this. Uh, it may be that others out in the world have discovered it. I've not seen it in textbooks. It's something I invented a few years ago, many years ago, actually, to teach my students. Um, largely because they had trouble with negative signs and negative numbers. But let's look at the process. The process is really a means of avoiding using the cross. We know that we're going to need x times x to give x squared, so let's just write that in. That's taken care of. Now with the cross method, we used to have to write all the combinations out. With the product sum method, we simply say, we write this, minus 24, and under, often underneath it, minus 2. Now, I, I see some people that do it with a cross and write the minus 24 up here and the minus 2 down here. There are all sorts of ways of setting it out on the page, but regardless of how it's set out, it's all the same method. And what we ask is what numbers multiply to make minus 24 and add up to give minus 2. Now it's at this point that lots of students struggle because Having a product to give a negative number and a sum giving a negative number and trying to think of all the positive and negative combinations that work frustrates students immensely. And I encounter many students in my tutoring that have trouble with this precise thing. So here's what I discovered, and I hope it helps you. Share it with your friends. What I did was I attach this number, oddly enough, with the sign belonging to the number on the top. Now, probably don't need that here. Uh, why do I do this? The questions now change, but what it allows us to do is think about the numbers themselves first, and then afterwards worry about whether they're positive or negative. So in other words, it becomes a two-step process now. And the question is, and I, I train my students to ask to, to actually say the words in their head, because the words matter. What numbers multiply to make 24? Forget the minus sign. What numbers multiply to make 24? And subtract to give 2. Now, if numbers subtract to give 2, it means they're 2 apart. So, when I have a minus sign here, I actually word it this way. What numbers multiply to make 24 and are 2 apart? So when there's a minus sign, that's how I say it. What numbers multiply to make 24 and are 2 apart? Now you know the combinations for 24. We don't have to list them out. When you know your multiplication tables, you can work it out. But I will list them in this case. 24 is 24 times 1, 12 twos, 8 threes or 6 fours. And what we're really asking is which pair of factors are 2 apart? Well, they're 2 apart, 6 and 4. The others aren't. That's 5 apart, 10 apart, 23 apart. They're the combination we need. They multiply to make 24, and they're 2 apart. Now, once we've identified the 6 and the 4, we then ask the question, how do they give me that minus 2 in the middle? Well, if we have a negative, whatever the sign is, whether it's positive or negative, the biggest number has to have that sign. So if it's a positive number, we have to get way up in the positives first. If it's negative, we have to get way down in the negatives. So if it's a negative 2, the 6 has to be negative. And now we ask the question, do we come back up 4 or go down another 4 to get to minus 2? Well, minus 2 is minus 6 plus 4. If we went minus 6 minus 4, that would take us way down to minus 10. So our combination is minus 6 plus 4. And there we go. That's the method. 
Now, I'm going to demonstrate this little technique here. This is the product, this is the sum, but by using this combination of signs, we break the problem into two steps. So let's do another one that's rather difficult. Here's one. I actually wrote it up on the top of the board here. Another minus 2x minus 48. <clears throat> now this one would cause students a lot of grief because we write minus 48 and minus 2. And by the way, I like to keep the signs away so I can actually get this nice little loop in here. And let's ask the question, what numbers multiply to make 48 but are 2 apart? And that's a lot easier than just asking for all the combinations for 48. Well, 48 and 2 apart is obviously not 12 and 4 or anything like that. It's 6 times 8. 6 eighths are 48 and they're 2 apart. How do I get minus 2? Well, the big number has to be negative to get us down into the negatives. And if I start at minus 8, I have to come up 6 to get to minus 2. So that's my combination. Plus 6, minus 8. Do you like it? Let's try another one. Um, here we go. This is one I did in a previous video. I did this for the cross method. Let's see how simple it is using this method, particularly with this little technique. Now I've made an absolute mess over here, so I'll have to do my calculations down below. But I write plus 12 and minus 7. I make my loop, and this time, because there's a plus sign, my question is this. What numbers multiply to make 12, but add up to 7? Well, 3 times 4. 3 fours are 12, 3 plus 4 is 7. And now I ask the question, how do I get negative 7? Well, it's negative, so the big number is negative. And what do I do with the 3? Well, if I start at minus 4, I've got to go down another 3 to get to minus 7. So my combination is x minus 3, x minus 4. That is your PS method. And it avoids having to write all that big cross and try all the combinations. If you know your factors of numbers quite well, your multiplication tables, then this method will help you a lot. So let's clear the board and we'll try three more fairly quickly. And uh, I hope you like it. Let's have a look. Well, as you see, I decided to do four to solve to factorize four quadratics. Uh, I decided to do one with two plus signs, one with two minus signs, one with a plus minus, and one with a minus plus. So we've covered the different combinations. So let's do them quickly, and hopefully by watching, you'll understand the process. And then, as in my last video, I've got a gift to share with you. Uh, I'll tell you about it in just a moment. But, in every case, we're going to have x times x, because they're all what we call monic quadratics. Mono means 1, so monic means it's 1x squared. And that makes this quite easy. I'm going to share about non-monic quadratics shortly in other videos. Well, let's do the first one. The product is plus 24. The sum is plus 11. And we'll do my little method with the funny little loop. And we ask ourselves, and please practice the wording, I'm going to say it out loud, what numbers multiply to make 24 and add up to 11? That gives us pause for thought. 24, it's not 24 and 1, 12 and 2, 3 eighths. 3 eighths are 24, and 3 plus 8 is 11. Because it's plus 11, the big number is positive, and we ask ourselves, what do we have to do to the 3 to get from plus 8 up to plus 11? The answer is we have to add that as well. 3 and 8 make 11. Plus 3, plus 8, it's finished. This one, our product is minus 14, our sum is plus 5, 
And we ask ourselves, what numbers multiply to make 14 that are 5 apart? The difference is 5. What numbers multiply to make 14 that are 5 apart? Well, 14 is easy because it's either 14 times 1 or 7 times 2. And 7 times 2, they're 5 apart. How do I get a plus 5? Well, because it's a positive number, the big number, the 7, must be positive. And how do I get to plus 5 from plus 7? I have to subtract 2. So it's plus 7 minus 2. It doesn't matter, by the way, which way these go in. Well, let's do the next one. I'll move it a bit closer so it won't clutter up so much. Uh, our product is minus 36. Our sum is minus 9. We create our little loop, and our question is what numbers multiply to make 36 that are 9 apart? It's obviously not 36 and 1, uh, three, three twelves. 3 times 12 is 36. And 3 and 12 are 9 apart. So we now ask, how do we get a minus 9 with these? Because it's negative, the big number, the 12, must also be negative. And to get from minus 12 to minus 9, which is what we want, we have to go up 3. So x plus 3, x minus 12 is our combination. Now that would have been quite a difficult one with the cross. This one here, our product, plus 32. Our sum, minus 18. They're quite large numbers. But we ask ourselves, what numbers multiply to make 32 that add up to 18? Now, 4 eighths would be the first thing you'd think of if you know your tables. Uh, but 4 plus 8 is 12, so it's not that. And it's certainly not 32 and 1. Uh, half of 32 is 16, and 16 plus 2 makes 18, so they add up to 18. To get our minus 18... We have to have minus 16, that's the big number, it has to be the same size, sign. And to get from minus 16 to minus 18, we have to subtract 2 as well. Minus 16 minus 2 is minus 18. How do you like that? I hope you found that useful. I hope it's clear. And with practice, you can get very, very fast at it. And in fact, after a little while, you learn to do them in your head. That does take a little while. In the meantime, I have a gift. If you read the comments below, not the comments, but the information I've provided below the video, you'll find a link to a file, a, an Excel workbook that I've put on my website that allows you to generate as many of these kinds of quadratic equations as you wish to practice uh, factorising them. It means you don't have to go hunting for textbook after textbook after textbook to get lots of examples. And because the answers are printed on the side of the page, as I hope you can see now, uh, you can fold them underneath, solve your problems and open up the page and mark them. You don't have to go hunting the back, around the back of the textbook. You'll also notice there are tabs all along the bottom uh, allowing you to look at different kinds of quadratic equations. These ones, we're just factorising of monic equations, but there are plenty of others to explore, and I'll deal with them in other videos. And also, if you keep pressing the F9 button, the F9 key on your keyboard, because of the way Excel is designed, it will randomly generate different quadratics for you. So every time you open the spread a spreadsheet or a workbook, you'll find different questions for you to do, and every time you press F9, you'll get a whole, whole new sheet to work with. Uh, took me a while to put together, but it's yours for free. They're, unless someone's hacked my site and done something to it, uh, I can assure you it's completely virus-free and uh, macro-free, etc., etc. And uh, I commend it to you. Share it freely among your friends. I, my only request is that I own the copyright. You are not to make money from it, but give it away as many times as you wish, hundreds, thousands of times. I just want it to benefit people. There you go. If you like the video, then please click the like button. If you have appreciated the uh, workbook, 
and come back to have a look, then please leave a comment to that effect under this video. Uh, or leave a comment about what I've shown you. And certainly, if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, I encourage you to subscribe so you can find out about the videos that are coming about factorising more difficult quadratics. As always, I thank you for watching.